Guess what? I've done it again. What another tent. To be more precise, I actually have swapped my tent. The eagle-eyed amongst you or the tentaholics will maybe recognise what this is just by the bag, but let's wait just to see what comes in that. So, it's only about 1.7 kilos, so a wee bit lighter than the Crux Assault, which I've swapped. Right, we'll skip all the cloak and dagger stuff. The tent in question is an MSR Access 1, and it's the 21 model onwards. Not actually sure how old it is, but it's the one with the new vents, which should make a difference. I actually tend not to use footprints, I just use like a space blanket or whatever, so I'm going to put this on and see what the weight saving is. Yeah, so if you took that out of the equation, that's another 140 grams off there, so yeah, near a 1.6. One of the other things worth mentioning is the stuff sack is a burrito style bag that opens on the side, so you can scram the tent in there, scrunch it up, cinch it with the straps, and you don't have to be too precious or force the tent in at one end, especially when it's wet. So it is second hand, and it's a swap, um, thanks to Ewan and Dundee for doing the swap with me. He's now got my Crux Assault and I hope he enjoys it. He was looking for something bigger for two people. And I'm going to hope that this will just lighten my pack and make it slightly smaller because I'm only ever going to be solo in the mountains. The pole tips look to be in good nick. That's my only worry about this. The Access 1 that my friend James had a few years ago, these ferrules came loose from the um, composite pole and also the ends of the composite I think in one of the sections frayed very slightly and began to delaminate but these look okay. I'm quite impressed with the length of these pegs that come with it. They're actually really long. I forgot actually how long they were. Obviously bigger than the normal mini mini groundhogs which I had quite a few of in my bag. There we go. Right. That is the inner up. That centre pole, I don't know whether it's meant to be over the main arch or under. At the moment, I'll leave it over. I haven't checked instructions. Yeah, so there you go. It is a nice, spacious looking inner on it, I have to say. And the poles, especially with that centre frame, give it just a lot more snow loading stability and also helps brace out the, the main arch from the wind. Right, okay, so far all very intuitive, other than they don't colour code it so you know which way the door goes. So the fly material seems lighter than I remember it from my, my mate James's one. Seems lighter. And also the difference is that this now comes with a prop vent, as you can see here, to encourage airflow through into the inner tent. The other good side of it is, I don't know if I can show you, can I show you in here? Yeah, so it's got midgy mesh on the inside of that vent, just to keep the bugs out, good stuff. So there's now two pegging points at the end, which I think is slightly overkill, so I might try and combine the guy lines and make this into one triangle, one peg. Anyway. So I've just read the instructions and actually the cross pole goes under the main frame, so muck that up. And once again, we appear to be missing two guy lines and two pegs, which is less than I've had in the past with MSR. We're on 14 pegs at the moment, so it's a wee bit more time consuming to put up, especially as it's two parts, which I just have to accept with this model. Um, you can see the one line there, then there's the guy lines coming off the brow there on the cross pole, and then these end ones, and then there's these extra ones down here. So yeah, I'm missing one there and I'm missing the opposite side there. So I'll have a wee rake around, see if I've got any more guy lines I can use. Absolute tons of headroom above my head here. I don't know if you can see that. Plenty of space, I'm off center actually, but there's still probably a foot above me. Although I'm not sitting on a mat yet. So one of the things I do like about it is symmetrical space. So a rectangle with a slightly wider centre means you can either sleep head this end, feet this end, depending on the slope. And above your head and feet you have quite a nice generous pocket for storing stuff. So typically MSR, just the internal organisation side of it is pretty good. Almost on a par with Big Agnes. There's the equivalent at the other end. And you've got hanging loops above you here. 
quite a few of them actually, so you could run a line that way, or you could run a line for drying stuff down that way to the ends of the tent. And the vestibule so far looks pretty generous, I'll close it up and just see how it looks. Sorry I don't have a wide angle lens on this camera, but actually this vestibule is pretty damn big. Easy for storing a pack and shoes off to one side and then just cooking down in here. And the vestibule itself slopes steeply enough that cooking even with a fairly large or high uh, reactor stove, or would you, I've forgotten it, the wind burner, MSR wind burner for instance, they would all sit in here and you'd be able to cook fairly safely. One of the other features I really like about this is in the vestibule we have a two-way zip for venting when you're cooking or just to promote a wee bit of extra airflow. I'm always banging on about this and I hate tents that don't have it because it really makes a difference. And in the Access 1, because it's such a well-sealed tent, I think you really need to use it a lot of the time in combination with the inner vent, which I'll close up and show you now. That is the sum total of your breathable mesh in the inner, which makes it really warm, really cosy in snow and cold conditions. But the downside of that is there's been some criticism about the amount of condensation you get in this tent. So MSR addressed it in 2021 by adding two prop end vents, as I showed you earlier there, to promote a wee bit of airflow through the tent. But I still think they haven't added a cap like an Acto or a hooded vent up here. So I think you probably have to possibly just keep that open when you can. And that will give it some top flow as well to let moist air out as well as driving it through. So just to give you an idea of the inner's length, my feet are at the bottom. I'm five foot eight. I hope you can see this okay. And I don't know where that is. Maybe another foot roughly above me. And the walls are not enclosed on you. A uh, wee bit like the Terra Nova Southern Cross 1. I always think the, the ends are much lower and they kind of encroach on your head and foot. So it feels more claustrophobic in the Southern Cross 1. It's big upside though is it's exoskeleton, which sadly the access isn't. So it's a two, two part process for pitching and you've got to be careful in the wet. You can see it's also designed to combat spin drift because of the really high bathtub floor on three parts of the of the inner up to the door point, which is then slightly shallower. Yeah, and our door just ties back at the middle. Um, so it just keeps that door nice and secure, no flapping. Also means when you're cooking, it's less likely to get blown about and into your stove. The door on the fly doesn't open from the middle, which always involves you stretching across your gear and getting soaked, especially when you're in your sleeping bag. On the MSRs, they open nearest to you, nearest the inner tent, and right above you. So it's really convenient to get in and out. There is also a rain gutter on the outside, which I always like to design off, which just makes the rain touch it and run off rather than run down and drip into the tent. Looking at the fly sheet in detail, although it's lighter, it feels slightly lighter, it feels different from the old version. I think this is the new Dura Shield finish, which I think will be alright, but it will probably need some seam sealing, so I believe. So I suspect if I test this tomorrow, which I hope to do, in some fairly heavy rain, we might get some leaks. But there's only one way to find out, just what needs attention. So in case it gets really spin drifty, you can actually just store the prop vent away and reseal the ends. And that should stop most of the snow getting in. I've added another major guy line onto here and taken the original MSR off and put it onto the missing one here. And I've done the same at the other end. So we're now good to go and I've swapped out a few of the big MSRs for slightly lighter carbon uh, carbon cores, nice and light. So I tried to keep the weight run about the same. I don't know how clearly you can see it, but this new shield fabric, Dura Shield is it? Really beads nicely. I don't see any wetting out at all on the fly, which you normally do see with a lot of coatings, just the odd dark patch, but nothing on this. So there you go, the MSR Access 1 2021 onwards model with the end vents. Hopefully that will cure some of the ills that have been on the internet about this tent. Because other than that, I think it's a real classic. It's really nicely designed. It's a great combination of strength and lack of weight, lightweightness. So not full on expedition, but perfect for most four season trips overnight and backpacking stuff. And for fairly useful Scottish mountains, the Alps, etc. So, we'll give it a go over this weekend, see how we get on. If you've got any questions, drop me a line. The crux will be the condensation control, and I reckon this weekend might be a good test. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there soon.